Hey, let's get things rolling. <laughs> you guys ready to go? Yeah. All right. Sure. Good. All right. We'll go ahead and call uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting for Tuesday, April 28th uh, to order. Um, we have no old business. Uh, and the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from February 25th. Everybody's had a chance to review those. Any comments, any questions? Hearing none. Um, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm late to the uh, clicking the unmute button. Just a small edit um, on the second page. Okay. Changing the word uh, then to then, and that was it. Good call, good catch. That is a, as a friendly amendment, I think. So uh, we would uh, entertain a motion then to approve uh, the meeting uh, meeting minutes from February 25th. So moved. Very good. Thank you, Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any, uh, any conversation? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I didn't see who seconded. Could you say your name? Uh, Joe Barbieri. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. All right, very good. Mike, can I ask a question? Yes. So I, I've participated in a couple of these in other uh, other towns, and, and I'm but I'm no expert on this. But in in other towns, I've seen votes go as a roll call vote, so they go down the line and and say, and I, if that's not required by the state, I. I don't care. I just don't want to uh, carry this out uh, and not follow all the rules. I, I don't know, Ben, if you've been sort of briefed on the way the state is recommending how we do this or what? I, I don't know if they specifically call for a roll call, but it wouldn't hurt just to be conservative about it. Uh, yeah, if rather than everyone is sort of raising their hand, it might be more clear. I mean, we're probably going to have, what, two votes tonight or something like that. So yeah. it's not, it's not going to be too difficult to do. So Sure. Let's do it. Just my uh, two cents. Uh, I'm, I'm good with that. So I think we saw uh, eyes, uh, approvals of the minutes from myself, Mike Valancourt. I think from Colin Powers, from Kevin. Correct. From Matthew Caton, from Michael. Yes. CW, from Michael O'Flynn, from Aaron, and I, from- I wasn't there, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I wasn't in the, I wasn't at the February meeting. So. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, other than that, I think we've, we've recited the, the roll call and, and we can do a, we'll do a full on roll call when we, when we vote on the actual uh, agenda item. But Michael, I appreciate the comment because I think that's a good point. We wanna try to keep a, a clear record. All right, on to the application, we good? Yes. Okay. So this is to hear the request of Michael O'Flynn representing, <coughs> excuse me, the owners of the property at 39 Thrasher Road, map U32, lot 6-27, for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in the basement of the existing house based on section 19-7-5 and 19-5-5 of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Uh, and, and again, we're given the, the COVID-19 situation, we're conducting this meeting um, via Zoom, right? Let's call it Zoom, yeah. <laughs> uh, ben, do you wanna give us a quick rundown on the, on the application? Sure. Uh, Michael Flynn, who you probably see on your screen, is a, is a contractor that came to me with a building permit to do a finished basement with a kitchenette. And uh, the owners of this property are uh, Bob Martinak and Maureen Martinak. And we'll, we'll also add that when, when we do the finding, we'll add the owner's names to that. Uh, my understanding is uh, Bob is Maureen's father and they bought this house together with the intention of uh, Bob living downstairs uh, in an in-law apartment situation and, and Maureen living in the upstairs. The house is a single story house with a walkout basement. So it's got, you know, full, full light on 
the back side of it. Uh, so it caters pretty well to having a finished basement. The basement was finished prior. It's being refinished at this point. And uh, basically I told Mr. O'Flynn that if they wanted to have the kitchen down there, it would require an accessory dwelling unit approval by the zoning board. And uh, he's following through with that. So here we are. Very good. Mr. O'Flynn, would you like to offer some comments on the application? Uh, any explanation uh, beyond what you've submitted in that application, beyond what uh, what Ben has just stated? In kind of the whole summary that Ben just went through is uh, exactly what I would have said. Um, uh, the basement was already finished, and it's pretty much just the addition of the um, of the kitchen, and then keeping everything to the 600 square foot. Um, regulation that Cape Elizabeth has in place. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't know, unless you have any, any questions, um, Ben was very helpful in helping me get together the uh, all the paperwork and everything needed to, to submit the application. Great, great. Uh, ben, any feedback from any any members of the public? No, there wasn't. Okay, okay. Uh, and I, I, I don't believe, it doesn't look to me that we have uh, anybody else on, uh, on the meeting here as far as uh, members who might want to comment. Is that everybody else's understanding as I kind of look at the screen? Yeah, let's see. And, and I guess what I should say is if there is a member of the public who's, who's on this, uh, on this conference uh, involved with this meeting and, and you want to speak, please, please do so. Oh, the, it's just us and one extra Mike Valancourt. <laughs> there well, hey, there's actually 13 participants listed down below and yeah. I see 11 Brady Bunch squares. Okay. I think uh, Bob, the owner is listening. Um, okay. So I don't, I'm not sure how the Zoom application works. I don't know if he's listed as a participant. Oh, okay. There's, uh, yeah, so there's 11 panelists. Yeah. And oh, attendees. There's two attendees. Two attendees. So one, Bob, Bob Martinak and somebody named John. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to click on John or I'll click on Bob first. And uh, here's Bob. So Bob, you're allowed to talk at this point. Hello. Hi. Hi, Bob. Okay. Hi. Uh, no, I everything that uh, Mike has said is pretty much you know the way it is. Um, like he, he mentioned, uh, I'm I'm retired. Uh, my daughter is in Texas. She's coming up in June. We both bought the house around the first of the year, and the main reason was that the finished business with a basement. Uh, it was just perfect for what I was looking for. It was just where I can live. And the main reason why I wanted the kitchen that is I just needed some place where I could boil some water or cook some food. And that's about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Bob. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to John. Uh, John, can you hear us? John, John, you're you're muted right now. So if you can unmute, if you have anything to say, you could unmute and tell us. All right, John's not unmuting. So there was just a second ago there was a third person on there, but they fell off. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, if we want to move forward a little bit, and then maybe in a, in a minute we'll we'll try to jump back and see if anyone else is on. Yeah, maybe be yeah, that, slightly more casual with this one to make sure we get everybody. I think that makes sense. So let's then open it up for uh, board discussion.
uh, and then we can circle back to the, the to the extent there that there might be some other public comments. Um, thoughts from the board members. Maybe just a quick question for Ben. So it is the the kitchen here that is the necessity for the ADU permit, correct? Correct. And and the, the sort of definition of kitchen that makes it a or a kitchenette that rises to this level is it because there's an oven installed or uh, that's more a general question as, as opposed to for this specific thing yeah, but with a sink and a our our definition of kitchen basically says if something if something resembles a kitchen and has some components of a kitchen it can be considered a kitchen okay uh, i don't like to just say if there's no stove then it's not a kitchen because we have had people just do these full monstrous kitchens without a stove and obviously they become kitchens in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a slightly more vague definition of kitchen that basically gives me the judgment call of saying yes or no, is it a kitchen? So it kind of depends on all the appliances and the, the sum of the parts. Okay. But, cer but certainly if you have a refrigerator, a stove, and a sink, uh, it's a kitchen. It's a kitchen. And then the only other question I really had for you is, you know, have you had a chance to look at the square footage calculations and we're right up that's, you know, close to that 600 square foot limit? I, I just kind of took a quick look and I, I don't know if adding kind of the, the, the rooms is there a little bit disparate here, um, surrounded by some HVAC, a washer and dryer that's shared. Um, I, I guess I just kind of wanted your thoughts if you had looked at those calculations and, and you were comfortable. I did, I did look at the calculations and go over them with Mr. O'Flynn and uh, I, I believe that they're accurate. I've, I've been in the space. Uh, the office, um, the office is going to be used by Maureen. Uh, so that space is not counted and the HVAC space is not counted and the washer and dryer space isn't because those are spaces that will be used by Maureen. So basically counted the, uh, the bedroom, the bathroom, kitchen, living area, and hallway. And that, and that gets it to 600. It is close, but it, it appears to meet the rules. Uh, also just note, I'm sorry. I, didn't mean to jump in. Uh, I, I had a question. Uh, this will probably be for Ben. Um, I, I, my first comment is that this, this project does seem to meet the criteria of the ordinance, but what I, what I guess I just don't know about is what, um, what's to prevent a future property owner from converting this into a long-term rental? And do we care about that? We do not care about that. Uh, it, it can be a long-term rental based on our ordinance. What it, what it can't be is a short-term rental. That seems, I, I right, there's, well, there's, there are provisions concerning short-term rentals, which seem to be based on a concern that, um, you know, neighboring property owners are concerned about additional people in the neighborhood. Why wouldn't that necessarily apply to having um, a long-term rental there? Why wouldn't that same concern? I, I, I don't see a policy dealing with long-term rentals, but why wouldn't that be a concern for the neighbors to have, in effect, a separate family move in? Well, we, we, don't, we don't have concerns about long-term rentals because people haven't expressed concerns about long-term rentals and people have expressed a lot of concerns about short-term rental. It's, it's the turnover of strangers on a daily or weekly basis that bother people, but when someone rents by the month, you know, they usually stay in a place for one year to 10 years. Uh, you know, that's a real family living somewhere and we've never had anybody concerned about uh, monthly or annual rentals. And, and I, I okay, well, we're not talking, well, we're not talking about a situation where somebody rents out their own house, but we're, we are adding an effect to, to the, housing stock, if you will, by adding another unit. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm just asking what our 
what our concerns are. If there aren't any, then, then there aren't, I suppose. Well, the concerns, uh, I think the concerns are what we address in the application, that the single family character is maintained, that there's adequate parking, and that it doesn't have a negative effect on the neighborhood. And right, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I kind of want to back off of it, but you did bring something to mind because the, the ordinance does specifically say that it's designed to, for, um, you know, for an in-law essentially to, to use it. But it seems that once you meet that, you're saying that once you meet that initial criteria, then all those limitations are off as far as future property owners are concerned. That just seemed anomalous to me. Well, the, the ordinance says you, you're allowed to rent to a friend or family member. So if you, if it, it doesn't specifically say it's supposed to be a relative or an in-law, uh, or a parent. It, it just says it's supposed to be a close friend or family member. So if, uh, you know, if the situation changes and the property changes hands, the, the next owner of the property is, is allowed to find a close friend or family member to rent to by the month or however they want to, you know, work out the financial aspect of it. Okay. I would just, it's also a conditional use permit. So if it's not used for a year, the, the permit's gone, right? Correct. And, and my understanding is that the council would, would set the policy on what constitutes short-term, long-term, and how all of that is regulated. So we, we probably don't need to get too deep into that issue. Um, I, think, I think that's right, Ben, but you tell me if it's not. I, yes, I agree. Okay. And just uh, because I'm thinking about this now, and really does, I think it's a little a bit far afield, but because this is an owner occupied home in general, that they, they won't have the restrictions on short term rentals that other people would renting separate, separate buildings, right? They can't, they won't be able to do short term rental with this property once they get this approval. Okay. Because, and the basis for that is that you are required to rent to a close friend or family member. So I've interpreted that to mean no short-term rental because I think it's almost impossible to do short-term rental and always be renting. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Uh, okay. So my final comment is, um, uh, so in the future, somebody couldn't rent to a, a screen, couldn't rent this unit out to a stranger. It would have to be kept in the family or to a friend. Is it would have to be, Yes, it would have to be rented to family or a friend okay. in the future. A, any additional uh, questions? Yes, one, for unless Mike would like to uh, jump the queue. You want me to go first? You, you can go. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hold off. Sure. Thanks, Matt. So this is um, for, the, for the applicant or the applicant's representative. Um, there, it, there's is is that bedroom down there existing today? So the applicant, the application says there are four bedrooms in the home, um, and there are no no additional proposed bedrooms. Is that is that true? You're asking me. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. There's no there's no additional bedrooms. Um, I mean, I believe if they're saying there's four. They're counting three upstairs and the one that's already existing in the uh the walk-in basement so so there's an existing bedroom in the basement so really yes. the, the it's being reworked maybe but there's already a bedroom down there there just isn't a kitchen yes okay great thanks there, and, and a bathroom down there as well there's an existing one yes yeah great thanks on to you matt i'm just clicking the unmute button all right uh, my query is on page 182 of the, of the ordinance. It's 1975 um, B7. And it talks about home occupation and home business. And I just wanted to double check whether um, if there's uh, evidence or the applicant can refer to, um, to that paragraph and state one way or the other whether there's got the way I read it is that if there is a home occupation or home business, a, this accessory dwelling unit is not permitted. 
And so um, I believe the applicant's father, uh, I think he mentioned that he was retired. I thought, I thought Bob mentioned he was retired. Uh, I, I just wanted to double check that if the daughter is working at home, whether that um, runs afoul of paragraph seven. I'll leave it to uh, uh, Mr. O'Flynn to comment if he wishes. Um, actually, I do not know what uh, Maureen's profession is. Um, um, Bob would know if, if you want to mic him in on that. But as far as I know, there's no uh, home business that's going to be conducted in the home. So keep in mind, working from home is not the same as home business necessarily. Good point. Yeah, th that's a... There's a gray area, obviously, especially with where we're at right now with people working from home. Uh, anyone's allowed to do a little work at their house. It's when they want to formally set up a business and use that address as their business address or, you know, take business deliveries at that address. There needs, there needs to be something else going on for it to rise to the level of home occupation. And, uh, you know, the Martin Axe should be aware that I wouldn't be able to approve a home occupation or a home business permit for that property in the future. Uh, thank you, Ben. The, um, I was just looking at the definitions on page 14 and 15 that refer to the um, home business and home occupation. It doesn't sound like um, the two applicants are going to fit into that category, but I, I note Ben's comment, so um, I'll leave it at that. And the presumption is that um, the paragraph seven on 182 probably doesn't apply. Um, there we are. Okay. Other questions for the applicant and or for Ben? All right. Hearing none, do we want to circle back and see if there are any other members of the, of the public who have jumped on who want I to? Only, I only see Bob in the attendees queue. Okay. Yep. Right. The, the other ones dropped off. They might have been trying to go to the other meeting. I'm not sure. Okay. Very good. On then to uh, the board's consideration of the application. Uh, what is the what is the will of the board here? Uh, I, I personally think this is a good use of the ADU provision. It you know falls within the guidelines. There's no new construction. It's on public sewer. Uh, you know the other typical things. Um, you know because there's no new construction, there's no environmental impact. There appears to be adequate parking. Um, there's the access that's required in the plans. Um, I'm, I'm supportive of this and I think it's a well put together application. Not here. Um, not hearing much more from anybody, but I, I agree. Um, and I, no, no real reason to expound or, or, uh, or uh, going into any further detail other than what Kevin just said, I'm, I'm comfortable with the application. It makes sense to me. Um, and I guess uh, if we don't hear any opposition, perhaps we then entertain a motion to approve. I move to approve the application as, as presented. All right, so that is a motion to approve the request of Michael O'Flynn. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Representing the owners of the property at 39 Thrasher Road for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in the basement of the existing house based on section 9-7-5 and 19-5-5 of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. We have a uh, uh, motion. We have the second. Um, are there any further uh, comments from the members of the board on that? Aaron Mosier on the second. Aaron, did you second that? I did. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. And and let's uh, let's go through the roll call as well per uh, Michael's suggestion. I Mike Valancourt uh, vote to approve. Mr. 
Joe Barbieri, vote to approve. Matt Caden, vote to approve. Kevin Just, vote to approve. Uh, Michael Tadema Whelan, to vote to approve. Right. Aaron that. Mosier, vote to approve. Good, good. Colin Powers, vote to approve. I think that covers it, right? Yes. We've hit everybody there? Okay. Yep. Um, now, I just need to get back on computer number two so we can run through the, <laughs> the findings here. Um, bear with me for just a second to do that. Yes, for some reason, my computer did not want to do the, the video thing. Let's see. All right. So uh, uh, proposed findings of fact, um, this is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in the basement of the existing house based on section 19 dash 7-5 and 19-5-5 of the zoning ordinance. Proposed finding of fact two, the subject property is 39 Thrasher Road, map U32, lot 6-27. Proposed finding of fact three, Michael O'Flynn is the applicant and represents the owners of the property at 39 Thrasher Road. Uh, proposed additional findings of fact, the additional Proposed finding one, the proposed use will not create uh, hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary con uh, conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design and operation. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Proposed additional finding of fact four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Proposed additional finding of fact five, the design and external appearance of any existing building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to, to its neighborhood although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture, and proposed additional finding of fact six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5B uh, of the zoning ordinance. I have, one, I have one comment for, uh, I'd like to put the owners of the property in there and I forgot to do that on the agenda. So I, I think it, I think it should read, uh, to hear the request of Michael O'Flynn representing the owners of the property, uh, Bob and Maureen Martinak at 39 Thrasher Road. I'd like to get their names into it. So that, that would be proposed finding of fact three would be a mod, that modification, I believe. Sure, that's a good place for it. Okay. Other, uh, other thoughts on the proposed findings? I have an additional. Oh. I'll go okay. ahead. No, I was gonna say on the additional finding number five, the design and external appearance of any existing building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition. It's, I know we've, we've been through that one before on a couple of them. There's no new addition or anything here. So I, I just, I feel like that there might be a better wording of that. Um, it may be just the design and external appearance of the existing building is, compa is, a, is compatible to its neighborhood. I don't know. There, there aren't any changes to it, so I don't. I... Is there any reason we shouldn't just strike that? I mean, I'm fine striking it. Yeah, I don't think it's relevant in the context of this anyway. I mean, there there would be that would be relevant if it were new construction or an addition or an alteration. And since there's not, I'm fine striking that. Okay. 
Uh, over to me. Uh, the old paragraph six uh, recommend that we insert um, the other section of the ordinance, 19-5-5, um, before we talk about the the other 19-7-5.b. Uh, so, so uh, Matthew, to be clear, uh, the proposal then is to modify uh, additional finding of fact six to include that additional provision from the zoning ordinance, right? Yes, just so we have those two paragraph provisions. Okay. Yep. All right, so we're, we're doing a little bit of tweaking here. Carmen, are you, you good with this? You got it? Yes, yes I have, thank you. <laughs> Put you right on the spot. <laughs> So the section 1955 doesn't have any um, alpha after it. It's just 1955. I I believe that's I believe that's right. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's, yes. Thank you. All right, so uh, do we then have a uh, motion to approve the proposed findings of fact and the proposed additional findings of fact as, uh, as discussed with the, uh, with the friendly amendments that, that we've talked about? So moved. Thank you, Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We'll uh, run through, through the uh, roll call. I, I, Mike Valancourt, uh, uh, vote to approve the proposed findings of fact and the proposed additional findings of fact uh, as discussed with friendly amendments. Hi, Michael. Tadema Whelan, vote to approve. Joe Barbieri, vote to approve. Uh, Matthew Caden, vote to approve. Kevin Just, vote to approve. Colin Powers, vote to approve. Aaron Mosier, vote to approve. All right. I think that's all of us, right? Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, that covers it. This is my first, my first Zoom meeting. And it was somehow relatively successful, despite my best efforts to really sabotage it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably won't be the last. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. I think we got a little ways to go before we get out of the woods. Um, I'm just Welcome to Cape Elizabeth, back. Mr. Martinak, if you're still on the phone. I, I think we will, uh, we will be having a Zoom, a May meeting via Zoom next month. And, uh, and then hopefully June, we're back in person. Okay, good. Good, excellent. Great. This worked well. I think it did. I think it did. Um, Michael O'Flynn, thank, thank you for your, uh, your assistance here. And uh, thank you to everybody for participating. I don't, there's no other business on the agenda unless anybody has anything else. All right. Have a, have a great evening, guys. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. I'm Thanks, only everybody. missing the gavel. The, the gavel is the only thing I'm missing here. I expect that next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll win <whittle> one. <laughs> take, take care, guys. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.